Martin, you're telling me what the big issue here in uh, security is. What do you think the big issue is? Well, I think it's, it's what it's been for many years now. It's not the technologies, it's the people. We don't have necessarily the number of people or the people with the education that we need to actually make a lot of the tools work, a lot of, of security work. You know, I've been at this conference now, this is my fifth year covering this conference, Brian, and I agree with that, but I think this problem is even exponentially harder because the problem is harder, and so now, not only is what they need to know, they need to know stuff, but they need to know more than they need to know five years ago, yes? Well, I think it, you know, coming back to technology, it's changed so much in the past five years. It's much more consumer driven. It's much easier for people to use technology now. But they, the interfaces and how people use technology is so easy that it can actually hide the complexities of the security problems behind it. So yes, I agree with Marty when he says the problem is still people. But the technology is part of the problem too, because we're advancing so rapidly and it's changing so much, we're not making it any more secure than it used to be. If you look at uh, mobile phones, it's in the same place uh, PCs were in the 80s and 90s. They're not secure. And we're moving, the, we're moving that problem back into, uh, onto mobile devices again. Yeah. So there's also the concept of technology debt or security debt, where things have been changing and we have not been keeping up. And that debt just keeps growing and growing and accumulating, and the more debt we have, the more debt it causes. So I think that's really one of the key issues is that we aren't, we're aren't we trying to use technology to pay back some of that debt when it's really a people debt instead and an understanding debt. We have a, a lack of understanding of what's really happening in our organizations and in security in general. So I hear year after year about the issue with people, not enough talent, we're not you know appreciated enough as well. But what what has changed even more so this year? Because it feels like it's accelerated so much this year, this concern of people. What do you think it is, Brian? I think it's because our environments are getting so complex to, to defend. It's, it's not a desktop and servers and mainframes inside a network anymore. It's, you're, you're trying to protect mobile phones, USB keys, tablets, that are all over the place uh, and outside your direct control. And you're, therefore your, your target size has increased and the vulnerabilities that are out there that, that criminals can use to get into your systems have increased and a lot of that is the people who are using those devices are not trained on how to use the security. We're rolling out technology so quickly that we don't know how to secure it. You're itching to respond. Uh, no, it, it, he's, he's dead wrong. It's, it's one thing. I can explain it in three letters. NSA. It's the fact that we have realized that our governments are as much of a threat to our corporations, to our personal privacy, as the cyber criminals ever were. It's now a known fact that these are issues that we have to deal with and we can no longer trust our government, not just the US government, but the UK government, the, uh, the Asian governments, the European governments. None of them can be trusted to watch our data if we're not doing it ourselves. And that's a huge realization for a lot of companies. They thought they had a partner, and now they're finding out that that partner has been sleeping around. Yeah, they thought they had a trusted partner, and that, <laughs> that's that, that's even worth the the old saying: the person who hurts you the most is the is the person you trust the most. But hold on. one of the things that always amazes me about this conference in general is, you know, nobody talks about oh yeah, so we catch the bad guys and then we sue them. Like, it's just more of like how do we protect ourselves? It doesn't seem like there's any sort of legal recourse ever in any of this. Our, our, our big problem is, is we're not tackling what the real cause of the problem is, which is the criminals. We're attacking the symptoms. So we're trying to stop virus attacks. We're trying to stop DDoS attacks. We're, we're trying to shut down botnets. We're not shutting down the people behind those attacks and behind those tools. We're not giving law enforcement enough uh, resources, enough people uh, to, uh, to, to be able to tackle those problems. We're not giving courts and international cooperation proper uh, resources to, to, to tackle the problem and put people away. So Martin, I want to ask you, you've been in this for a long time, you have lots of friends in security. What level of reassurance do you give to yourself and to your colleagues that you're doing the right thing, we've got to keep doing it? I mean, how, how do you keep going when it feels the problem is mounting going faster than you can handle? Because we are actually winning it if you look at winning as staying in business. If you look at the fact that we are continuing to prosper, we are continuing as, as an organization, as a, a career path to prosper and grow in despite all of the adversity and sometimes because of it. So the very fact that we are making money, that we are having careers, that we are not seeing people die because of cybersecurity means we're winning. How much longer, I don't know. Yeah, Are you still in business, Brian? I'm still in business, and it's doing quite well, thanks. Uh, but I think, backing up what Marty says there, it's uh, 
we have to realize there's no such thing as 100% security. Security is not an on-off uh, type scenario. It's not black and white. You, you cannot ever be 100% secure. So you have to try and make sure, well, how secure do I have to be to get this job done? And, to, and that's, just, as Marty says, to stay in business. Guys, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you, David.